This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. We're talking about how to do a ream and run, and let's talk now about humeral component selection and preparation. So when we're thinking about selecting the humeral component, we want a prosthesis that is adaptable, gives us secure fixation, ease of revision, and is bone sparing. There are a lot of options out there. One is partial resurfacing, a hemicap, stemless, short stem, end growth, press fit, but our favorite is the standard stem, simply impaction grafted. So partial resurfacing is thought by some people to be a conservative option, but as its name implies, it doesn't completely resurface the arthritic humeral head, leaving the shoulder at risk for unwanted contact with the remaining diseased bone surface. A hemicap may again seem to be conservative, but sometimes it's difficult to judge the amount of bone resected. So example, in this case, we have too proud of a humeral head, pushing the tuberosity way out laterally here. Here's another example where the humeral prosthesis is in ferrous, and another example where it is posteriorly angulated, giving rise to posterior contact with the glenoid. There's some are interested in a stemless humeral component, but again, there are issues with getting good fixation and good positioning. Short stem components are appealing to some, but if it's put in tight, there's a risk of having periprosthetic fractures. With cementing, there's a risk of it loosening, and also because it's a short stem, there's a risk of malpositioning with angulation of the stem with respect to the shaft. Ingrowth stems are uh, appealing to some. They have a bone ingrowth surface here and here, but the problem is one needs to get a tight dive seal fit, and sometimes that can be too tight so that the prosthesis can't be inserted all the way and winds up being high with respect to the tuberosity. Here's another example of a press fit stem where the uh, humerus just can't be fit down all the way because it's too tight, leaving the head way prominent. If the humeral head component is too small, we have what we call the junior mint situation where there's just not enough articular surface to mate properly with the glenoid. With respect to the humeral body itself, some st stems are cylindrical, but that makes it very difficult to get fixation with a uh, impaction grafted stem. We like ones that have a metaphyseal flare as shown here. So here's our preferred humeral component. It's got a smooth stem. It's impaction grafted. Here's our preferred humeral component. Uh, you can see it has a smooth stem which is impacted, impaction grafted into the um, metaphysis and diaphysis here. It is bone preserving because we have resected a minimal amount of bone uh, and um, there is no need for a tight press fit because we can make up the difference between the stem and the humerus with impaction grafting, keeping us from weakening the bone in any way. When we select a humeral head component, we have two variables to consider. One is the diameter of curvature, shown here, and the other is the thickness. So the diameter of curvature, we usually use a 56 millimeter diameter of curvature. That seems to fit most shoulders. And the thickness, we adjust according to the tension in the soft tissues. We like a humeral head that has the peg on the humeral head itself. This means that it's not in the way, sticking from the body like it is in some designs. So this is our preferred configuration with this stem in place. We don't have interference with the nipple here extending from the humeral body. The problem is shown here in this diagram, again, with this prominence interfering with our access to the glenoid. We make the humeral head cut at 45 degrees with the long axis of the shaft as identified by a medullary reamer, put down through the canal, um, and we uh, use progressively larger reamers until we get a nice first bite here in the diaphysis, trying to avoid 
any endosteal notching that can weaken the bone. We remove all the extra osteophytes and we make that cut at 45 degrees um, in all cases. Even when it appears as though the articular surface is in more valgus or more varus, we still make the cut always at 45 degrees because that's what fits the prosthesis. When making our humeral neck cut, we want to make sure that we make the cut at 30 degrees of external rotation so that our rotator cuff is protected. If the cut is made with the humerus in too much external rotation, uh, the rotator cuff will be endangered as is shown here. Here's an example of a properly done uh, head cut and you can see that we're protecting the soft tissues around and very carefully advancing the blade across the humerus. Thank you.